My short nasiha, my short talk is going to be about standing firm on our principles and that we're going to be tested, brothers and sisters. Now, before I get to discuss that we are going to be tested in our lives and it is a guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this life is a life of ibtila, it's a life of test. I want us to understand our context because if we really think about it, we should be so grateful for everything that we have. Alhamdulillah, honestly. The minute we have two or three meals a day is the minute that we should be thinking we are kings. In actual fact, the definition of a king at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was that they had access to running water and honey on the table. Not only do we have access to water and honey, but we have everything else that we have access to. So from that point of view, brothers and sisters, we should be so grateful living in the 21st century, living in this particular time, in this particular place of the world. Because we have food, shelter, clothing, and everything else. So from that point of view, we have a lot to be grateful for. In this context, we also have to understand that we're going to be tested. We're going to be tested, brothers and sisters, with hardship, and we're going to be tested with the good times. Because sometimes when we think about tests, we think, oh, I have to be in pain, I have to lose something. That's not necessarily true. The concept of a test in Islam is that we're gonna be tested with the good life and with the bad life. We're gonna be tested with the pain and with the pleasure. And there are so many ayat in the Quran, so many hadiths from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that clearly indicate that we're going to be tested. Very famous ayah in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 214, when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala basically says to us, that do you think you're going to go to Jannah without being tested? And Allah refers to the people before, the messengers and the companions that were tested so much that they said, where is the help of Allah? And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, indeed, the help of Allah is qareeb, is close. So from this point of view, we're going to be tested. And the interesting spiritual wisdom behind tests is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses it as a means, as a spiritual mechanism for us to come closer to Him and for us to go into paradise, Jannah. And this is why the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith in Tirmidhi, when he said that when Allah loves somebody, He's going to test them. When Allah loves somebody, He's going to test them. And from this point of view, tests are a spiritual mechanism and a means in order to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, from this point of view, being in a state of test is also purifying and testing our character. It cultivates the Islamic virtues. It cultivates the Islamic virtues in order for us for to be purified and elevated spiritually so we can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why it's so significant to understand that there is a lot of blessing in trials and tests because it shows us who we are. And this is very significant. It's so easy to be a good Muslim when you have your food, your shelter, your clothing, your happiness, your work, your job, your money. If everything is fine, it's easy to be a good Muslim, right? It's easy. And that's why in marriage advice, I speak to some brothers when they ask me for their rare advice. And I say to them, don't judge somebody by what they do when everything is fine but rather look into their character on how they react when they are tested with trials. That's when you know the person is someone of taqwa or someone who needs some work. And it's very, very significant for us to internalize this concept and not to use it to judge others, but to see where we are on the spiritual spectrum. How close are we to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because the concept of trials and tests really shows to us Am I inclining towards Allah or running away from Him? When things become difficult, 
and hard when my dignity has been affected when I lose a bit of money I lose my job something is taken away from me when I have slander backbiting going on something's happening in the community people are pointing fingers where do I go do I hurry towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do I give my morals up and do I give up my struggle towards Allah and do I now struggle towards my own hawa my ego and my nafs and that's very important because tests and trials really bring up our true character so in this context brothers and sisters I want to give you some principles that we have to stand firm on have our ground really dig our heels so we could basically inshallah be successful as a community not only in the United States not only in the West but generally as an ummah so principle number one principle number one brothers and sisters is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is where it begins and this is where it ends this is our raison d'etre it's our reason for existence worshiping Allah what does worship really mean it means to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to single out all acts of worship to Allah alone this is what we mean by worship in and of itself and for us to be true worshipers we have to understand worship is not like a business transaction like you have one business partner he's equal to another business partner and they make a transaction this is not worship but unfortunately amongst our community you know I hear some brothers come up to me and say bro Hamza I prayed for a whole month I did tahajjud for a whole month and you know what I still filled my exams so I'm not praying anymore I'm like hold on a second who do you think you are <laughs> right you're not on the same level playing field here you're not on the same level playing field you are the slave Allah is the master Allah deserves worship even if he gave you the crumbs of the world and we really have to significantly understand this because we worship Allah because of who Allah is Allah is al ilah he is the one deserved of worship regardless if we receive anything from his bounty but we do receive lots of things from his bounty but that's not the point the point is we worship Allah because of who he is how many times do we watch the television we watch great people of great sporting achievement or singers or artists and we praise them we give them a standing ovation we say bravo we give them some kind of honor from the point of view of saying that they're such a great sports person they've got such a great voice they have attributes that we praise although they don't benefit us directly yet we praise people because of some praiseworthy attributes now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is nothing like unto him and his names and attributes we affirm and we also understand they are totally transcendent and they are boundless so when we say Allah is al-wudud he is the loving coming from the word wud which means a loving that is giving we mean here it's the purest form of love it's the maximal type of love Allah is maximally perfect his names and attributes have no deficiency or flaw so from this point of view something should be happy, happening inside us we would want to praise Allah because he has praiseworthy realities his names and attributes because if we could do it for a singer or a pop star or some guy who knows how to play a flute or some guy who can run 200 meters very fast then surely we should be wanting to show our perfect gratitude and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's very important brothers and sisters that we worship Allah worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where our success lies Allah says in surah mu'minun indeed successful other believers that's the first principle worshiping Allah and everything now in our lives is a derivative of our purpose which is to worship Allah and if we don't understand it from this point of view it's like committing spiritual suicide because our main objective is to worship Allah and if we don't see our whole life through those lenses then it's no different from committing spiritual suicide 